guys, Richard Oldner here, and a welcome to the channel. What happens if we supercharge a small block Chevy? In fact, what happens if we supercharge two small block Chevys, a mild version and a much more powerful, wilder version? What happens if we run the same supercharger and the same pulleys? What happens to the power? What happens to the boost? Why am I asking questions? Let's get to the answers. To illustrate what happens both to boost and to power, we're going to take one supercharger, a Wyan 177 roots blower, and run it with the same pulleys, a 6-inch crank pulley and a 7-inch crank pulley, and we're going to run that combination on two different motors. We're going to run it first on a mild small block 350, and then on a much wilder 383 stroker. So what happens to boost? What happens to power? Let's find out. To get things started on our comparison, we started out with our milder 350 to compare the supercharger run on a mild combination and then a much more powerful NA combination. The 350 started out as actually an aluminum headed L98. Now I don't know which year this, this particular one was, but we made modifications to it anyway, but it had the aluminum L98 heads. It was a small block 350. And we added some kind of cam to it. Now this motor was already assembled when I did this test, so I'm not exactly sure what the camshaft was. We're thinking it's like a 212, 218 kind of camshaft. It did have a dual plane intake manifold on it because we had long since removed the factory tune port stuff. It had an RPM air gap and a Holley 650 XP carburetor. It had an MSD billet distributor and our inch and three quarter dyno headers that we run on it all the time now. Naturally, we swept through the timing to make sure that it had optimized timing. This particular combination wanted 34 degrees. And then we uh, changed jetting on the 650, although we didn't have to change it very much because the air fuel was already kind of spot on. And making the changes that we made showed very little change in power on the air fuel. And sometimes that's that's kind of what happens. So basically what this is, is a sub 350 horsepower, mild 350 kind of street motor. This would be very good for, you know, a daily driver and stuff. And made peak power, you know, below you know, between 5,000 and 5,500 RPM, 52 or 5,300. And our peak horsepower checked in at 346 foot pounds here at 5,300. Peak torque checked in at 412 foot pounds of torque uh, down here at 3,800. So you can see definitely had a mild camshaft in it. The dual plane works as always, and it would definitely be the go-to intake that we would recommend for this kind of combination because this is a low RPM thing. Anything below 6,000, the dual plane is definitely the way to go. And given this power level, the 650 worked very well. Long tube header is obviously always a good idea, and it's typically what we run on these combinations, along with a Mazir electric water pump with no front accessories on it. So here's what happened when we installed our supercharger. So we installed this wide 177 supercharger kit, and it is a carbureted application. We ran a single four barrel on this. I'll go ahead and show you what happened talk to you about the description here um the 177 supercharger we ran the same uh carburetor on it a 650 it might have been a little small but still we're only making 400 horsepower so for a 400 horsepower motor we can try that carburetor we ran a six inch crank pulley and a 3.5 inch blower pulley. And I see at the bottom, we actually installed an 850 carburetor on it just to see if the bigger carburetor would work. And we did some uh, jet changing. We lowered the timing down to 25 degrees and this thing was run on pump gas. So in this combination run with that pulley combination, a 3.5 inch blower pulley and a six inch crank pulley, the supercharged combination produced 405 horsepower peak torque was up to 446 foot pounds of torque and we'll go over the boost curves in just a second our final test was to obviously increase the boost and we ran a seven inch crank pulley <clears throat> the same uh blower pulley yeah the three and a half inch blower pulley and a larger seven inch crank puller so we sped the blower up quite a bit we obviously were making more boosts we made more power peak power jumped up to 452 horsepower peak torque was all the way up to 492 foot pounds as you can see because we were making more torque than power um, this is a fairly mild combination and now let's take a look at the boost curves associated with these pulley drive ratios with our 177 blower on the 350. now that we took a look at the power output of the supercharged 350 the mild 350 let's take a look at the boost curves associated with each of those changes so 
when we first saw, installed the 177 blower on the 350, we had the 3.5 inch blower pulley and the 6 inch crank pulley. And that produced the boost curve that you see here. It started out at 2.9 pounds, just below 3, down here at 3,000 RPM, and rose to a peak of 6.3 pounds out here at 6,000 RPM. Obviously, you know, fairly low boost. And we're only seeing, uh, you know, even out to 5,000, we're still seeing about four pounds and then we see a fairly steady rise which is a pretty good indication as we saw if you take a look at the small block forward blower video you'll see that as we put more camshaft in it we were able to lay this kind of power curve down um, because we're getting a big rise because the motor is fairly mild and that's why we see a big um, increase in boost there but here's what happened when we changed the pulley on the crank from a six inch to a seven inch pulley Here's what happened to the boost curve, and with that combination, power was up by 50 horsepower, 452 horsepower, and 492 foot-pounds. But the boost curve rose started out at 5.2, so here at uh, 3,400, we started a little bit higher on the second run. And then it rose to a peak of 9.3 pounds out here at 6,000 RPM. You can see the shape of the curve is still the same, um, just when we added the change the pulley we just brought the whole curve up basically everywhere it made more horsepower made more torque what this thing really needs is for the motor to be a for more efficient probably better cylinder heads definitely a better camshaft well, let's see what happens when we did exactly that as luck would have it we ran the same supercharger and same pulley combinations on a much more powerful small block combination this particular one was a 383 so already it started out bigger than the 350 it, it had flat top pistons, so it had uh, more compression to begin with. It had an AF set of AFR 210 heads, much more cylinder head than the factory L98 heads. It had a much bigger camshaft. This was a crane hydraulic roller, 600 lift, 252, 256 at 50 duration. So a big camshaft and 108 degree LSA. Remember, this is an NA cam, <laughs> tight LSA NA cam. And guess what? It also works under boost. Uh, we had a single plane intake manifold on it and a Holley 950 run with the same inch and three quarter dyno headers and it had a crane 1.5 ratio gold roller rockers on it. Again, we adjusted the timing and the jetting and the carburetor. This particular run was run with that Holley 950. So equipped our NA combination produced very good power, 550 horsepower NA. So this combination made more power NA than our supercharged 350 did with boost so we we're already starting out fairly good and 491 foot pounds and note that we made a lot more horsepower than torque we also ran this thing all the way out near 7,000 rpm but it made peak power at 6600 here's what happened when we added our the same 177 supercharger we ran it with a 950 holly feeding the supercharger and here's what happened when we installed it with the three and a half inch blower pulley and six inch crank pulley. The combination produced 594 horsepower. So just shy of 600 horsepower and 521 foot pounds of torque. So again, notice that the supercharged combination mirrored the NA combination, making more horsepower than torque, whereas on the other combination, it made more torque than horsepower. So we're going to take a look at the boost curves in just a minute. But here's what happened, because obviously this wasn't a huge gain in power. It wasn't even, in fact, it wasn't even 50 horsepower <laughs> from adding a supercharger. Here's what happened when we stepped up in boost, stepped up in pulley speed by putting the 7-inch crank pulley on there. Now we're getting closer. We gained almost 100 horsepower, and if we would have kept revving it, we probably would have gotten there. Peak power checked in at 644 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 565 foot-pounds. So now the thing was starting to make fairly good power. I mean, 600, 650 horsepower small block, that's pretty stout. But now let's take a look and see what happened with the boost curves, and we can compare and see what happened, how much boost this combination was able to supply this much bigger, more powerful 383 motor. Now that we've taken a look at the power output, let's take a look at the boost curves associated with running that same 177 supercharger on the more powerful 383 combination. As you can see, we even had a slight dip in the boost around going down 5,000 or so. We started off with our 3.5 inch blower pulley and 6 inch crank pulley. We started out at just 2.2 pounds. 
dipped down as low as 1.6 pounds. That's right, a whopping <laughs> 1.6 pounds of boost on our combination. That's almost not having a blower motor because it's only 1.6 pounds, but then rose to a peak of 2.8 pounds. And here's, to give you an idea, here's what the that same pulley combination, the boost that it made on the smaller 350, you can see a lot more boost and then rose up dramatically as we showed kind of toward the end, whereas this combination rose up very slightly. But here's what happened uh, on our combination when we stepped up in pulley size from the 6-inch to the 7-inch crank pulley. We obviously made more boost. It still dropped down um, as the motor became more efficient, getting close to the torque peak and stuff. So it still dropped down. The boost started out at 4.7 dropped down to four pounds, and then eventually rose to a peak of 6.1 pounds. And to give you an idea, here's the comparison between the, here's what the other combination did with a seven inch crank pulley. Again, started out higher and then rose dramatically to over nine pounds, whereas this combination was only seeing about six pounds but at a much, much higher power level. So I'm gonna go ahead and put um, both sets of uh, blower pulleys up here. So we can see, um, you know, it's a big change in boost and obviously a big change in power on the much more powerful NA combination. We were seeing a lot more power at a lot lower boost. Both of those obviously very beneficial. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure running our supercharger, the 177 Wyan Root Supercharger, on two different small blocks? Well, we learned the same thing that we learned in the previous video on the small block board, because you see, it works on every motor exactly the same. Running the same blower with the same pulleys on two different motors that make dramatically different NA power really has a big effect on the boost pressure and ultimately the power. You see, on this mild combination, the boost was higher and the power was lower. On the much bigger, more powerful NA383, running the same blower speed brought the boost down, but the power up. That's an ideal combination. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.